Um, thank you very much for the introduction. My name is John Wang. I'm from Amazon AI. And today I'm going to talk about our recent work, Gemini, which is a distributed system to minimize the failure recovery overhead in distributed training, especially in large language model training. Um, you know, recently, large models are very popular, and many large, large language models, also known as LLMs, are developed by different companies. And compared to traditional distributed training, like for ResNet or for VGG, um, large model training has several unique characteristics. The first one is the extremely large model size. So you said that the number of parameters in GPT-4 could be over one trillion. Other than that, large model training also involves a huge number of accelerators, and it can take a, um, a very long time to finish the training process. For example, last year, Google uses more than 6,000 TPEs to finish the training of a Palm for over two months. Um, in this extremely large uh, scale distributed system, failures, including both software failures and hardware failures, are very frequent. And as reported in the paper of OPT 175B, which is an open source LLM released by Facebook, um, its training suffers from more than 100 failures over the course of two months, averagely two failures every day, and that's a lot. And a common way to address this problem like, is model checkpointing for failure recovery. The, the training system needs to regularly checkpoint the model states and these checkpoints are typically stored in a remote storage system, such as HDFS or S3 in, in AWS. In case of a failure, um, the training can resume, uh, sorry, the system can resume the training from a latest checkpoint, rather than restarting the training from the very beginning. And after the checkpoint is loaded, the training can be resumed, but you need to redo some computation, and we call this uh, time duration between the next checkpoint and the failure time point as wasted time. And this wasted time is a major failure recovery overhead. And from the figure, we can see a higher checkpoint, uh, a higher checkpoint frequency can reduce wasted time. But unfortunately, existing checkpoint solutions for LLM has very limited checkpoint um, frequency. This is because it takes a very long time to send a checkpoint to a remote storage system. Um, because of the extremely large model size, the checkpoint size is also huge. Um, let's take a Palmax example. Its number of parameters is uh, over 500 billion, so its checkpoint size is over six terabytes. So let's suppose the network bandwidth connecting GPU machines and the remote storage system is 20 gigabit per second. It can take 44 minutes to send one checkpoint to a remote storage system. And the checkpoint uh, frequency is uh, highly limited by the checkpoint time because a new checkpoint cannot get started before the completion of its previous one. So let's have a look at uh, how checkpoint really looks unlike in LLM training. We assume the checkpoint frequency is 100 iteration, but in practice, it's much longer than 100 iteration. That's an um, assumption. And then you can take tens of iterations to finish one checkpoint. And the third checkpoint begins at three, iteration 300, but unfortunately, an expected failure occurs at uh, iteration 310. So it will interrupt the third checkpoint. And because this checkpoint becomes incomplete, it cannot be used for failure recovery, right? Then the training system needs to retrieve the second checkpoint from the remote storage system for failure recovery. After the check checkpoint is loaded, the, the training can be resumed but from iteration 200. And we can see in this case, the waste of time is significant. Even with the highest checkpoint frequency, the waste of time is still very high. Like, uh, the highest checkpoint, ch highest checkpoint frequency means that the checkpoints can be sent to the remote storage back to back in the network. Um, still, take a Palmax example, its average waste of time is 110 minutes. It means two hours around two hours are wasted for one failure. And we know large model training involves thousands, even tens of thousands of GPUs. Um, it can also suffer more than hundreds of failures, and it means significant GPU resources are wasted. 
due to failure recovery. To address this severe problem during knowledge and language model training, our solution is similar. The key idea is to take a point to the CP memory. It's feasible because the CP memory size is much larger than the GPU memory size. And the table shows here um, is a hardware configurations of some GPU instances from popular GPU clouds. You can see in one instance, the CPU memory size is typically three times larger than the GPU memory size because the model states for checkpointing is generated on GPU memory, so it means the CPU memory size is sufficient to, to store a few checkpoints. When checkpoint into the remote storage system in existing solutions, the checkpoint frequency is limited by the low bandwidth connecting the, uh, the GPU machines and the remote storage system, and this bandwidth is just uh, like, typically a few uh, gigabit per second. But when we checkpoint into CPU memory, we can leverage the network connecting GPU machines, and this network has been highly optimized for training. And for example, the, the network bandwidth of P4D instances in AWS could be 400 gigabit per second. It means it can significantly reduce the checkpoint time and uh, it allows to achieve a much higher checkpoint frequency. One concern you may have is the CPU memory size is not big enough to store the history of checkpoints. But we observe that like, uh, the checkpoints are mainly used for two types of purposes. The first one is for failure recovery. It requires a very high, frequent, um, high frequency to minimize the failure recovery overhead, but you only need a latency one. And the other type is for debugging or for accuracy evaluation. You need to store the history of checkpoints, but uh, we can store the checkpoints at a much lower frequency. So based on this observation, Gemini only store the checkpoints for failure recovery in the CPU memory, and at the same time, you still store the checkpoints for other purposes in the remote storage system. So this is the reason we name our system Gemini. Gemini has two modules. The first one is for checkpoint creation, and we can see the um, GPU machines need to checkpoint the model states to GPU memory and, and to the remote storage at the same time, but at a very different frequency. Um, the other module is for failure recovery. And we can see the work agent in each machine need to monitor the health of each machine, and the root agent um, need to monitor the health of the whole training system. When machine, one machine is down, the root agent can interact with the cloud operator to replace the faulty machines with the healthy ones, and then you can begin the failure recovery procedure. Um, this uh, GMS design has two main challenges. The first one is that. Unlike data stored in the remote persistent storage system, the data stored in the CPU memory may get lost. And we use checkpoint redundancy to address this issue, and our design choice is just a pure checkpoint replicas. For example, for the checkpoints generated on machine one, it's stored in the local CPU memory, but at the same time, it's also stored in machine two and machine three. When machine one fails, we still have available checkpoints in machine two and machine three for failure recovery. Uh, we don't choose erasure coding as our design choice because of two reasons. The first one is um, erasure coding can somehow reduce the CPU memory consumption, but it can lead to prohibitive computation cost. Like for the data size of the checkpoints in one machine, it could be over 100 gigabytes. So the time to encode or decode such a large amount of data is very, very long, even much longer than the iteration time. And the second reason is that the CPU memory is not a bottleneck. In our video evaluation, even with the, the pure checkpoint replica design, only less than 25% of the CPU memory capacity is used for checkpoints. We can see data can, be, can get lost, and the checkpoints can store either locally or on the machine. So the one research question we must answer is, what's the optimal checkpoint placement to maximize the probability of failure recovery from CPU memory? I oh, have to um, uh, mention that so Gemini can, um, failure, can handle failure recovery 100%, because even the failure cannot be recovered from CPU memory, we still have checkpoints in the remote storage for failure recovery. And 
our solution is a group placement strategy. It has two steps. In the first step, even uh, suppose we have M replicas, then all the machines are divided into these joint groups, and each group will have M machines. In the second step, each machine needs to back up checkpoints for all the machines within the same group. And let's look at a more concrete example. Suppose we have six machines, and we need two check, uh, checkpoint replicas. Then uh, in the first step, these machines will be divided into three groups, and each group has two machines, right? And in the second step, machine one and machine two need to check up, uh, sorry, back up the checkpoints for each other. Machine two, three and machine four need to back up checkpoints for each other. It seems simple. OK, this is uh, the second step. It seems simple, but this group placement strategy is provably optimal. And another interesting observation is that we found two checkpoint replicas can already handle most of the failure cases. Like, let's, let's look at these curves. Suppose the total number of machines in the 20 is 16, and suppose we have two checkpoint replicas. When two machines fail at the same time, the failure recovery probability from CPU memory is 90%, 93%. Even with three machines fail at the same time, the probability is still 80%. The second challenge is um, the checkpoint traffic may interfere with the training, training traffic. So when we checkpoint to the remote storage, the, the two types of traffic can use different networks. So there's no interference. But when we checkpoint to CPU memory, checkpoint traffic can, and the tr training traffic can appear to share the same network, and it may harm the training throughput. Um, Luckily, we observed that there are some idle time spans in the network. Um, it means that if we can smartly insert the checkpoint traffic in this time, idle time spans, so it can achieve theoretically no overhead to the training throughput. Um, but when, uh, for the checkpoint traffic, it requires the GPU memory as a communication buffer. But unfortunately, the GPU memory is mainly used for the training and the available GP memory that can be used for checkpoint traffic is very limited. Um, when the idle time span is small, you like only need a very small GP memory, uh, GP memory as a buffer, uh, it looks fine. But when the idle time span is large, you will require a huge GP memory size. Then it can lead to out of memory issue and crash the training. So the question we need to answer is how can we minimize the extra GP memory consumption? for checkpoint traffic. We use the checkpoint partition and the pipeline mechanism to address this challenge. We first reserve a small GPU buffer at the receiver side, and then we partition this buffer into multiple sub-buffers. After that, we will further split the checkpoint traffic into small chunks with the same size as the sub-buffers. Then you will allow Gemini to pipeline the checkpoint communications because these sub-buffers can be reused. And in our evaluation, we demonstrate that a small GPU buffer, like only 128 megabytes, is sufficient to support the checkpoint traffic of, uh, with tens of gigabytes. Then let's look at how Gemini can resume training from failures. Um, for the software failures, you know, the, the data is still uh, in these machines, so in this case, each machine can directly load the checkpoints to the GPU memory for failure recovery. And when hardware failure occurs, the data, the checkpoints stored in these 40 machines get lost. But because of the redundancy, the, the checkpoints are still available at other machines. It means that, so in this case, Gemini will first replace the 40 machines with the healthy ones and then reuse the rank ID. After that, these machines will retrieve the checkpoints from other machines instead of from the remote storage system. After that, we can begin the failure recovery procedure. Let's look at the evaluation. And we implement Gemini atop deep speed and the parallelism strategy is 03. And we use 128, 800 GPUs as a evaluation. The total number of parameters used in the Evaluation models is 100 billion. Um, let's, let's look at the checkpoint uh, frequency. We have two baselines, 
The first baseline is uh, called strawman, which is the checkpoint frequency used in the training of a balloon. It check it, it checkpoint the model states every three hours. And the other baseline is high freak. This is uh, the, the highest checkpoint frequency we can achieve uh, when checkpointing to the remote storage system. But I have to mention that this high freak will incur other overhead, like say, serialization, like blocking the computation, but we don't consider that. Um, in our evaluation, Gemini can checkpoint the model states for every iteration, every iteration. And its checkpoint frequency is 170 times higher than the strawman and eight times higher than the high freak. Then let's look at the end-to-end -end training efficiency. Gemini can checkpoint the model states for every iteration, but its iteration time is almost the same as the training without any checkpoints. It means that there is almost no or an overhead on training throughput. This is because Gemini can fully leverage the idle time spans to accommodate checkpoint traffic. For example, when we train GPT-2 with 100, um, 100 billion parameters, the total time of the idle time spans is around 10 seconds, but it, we only need less than three seconds to finish the checkpoint traffic. In summary, um, large model training can suffer from frequent failures and significant GPU re um, resources are wasted. Gem um, to address this problem, we propose Gemini. The key idea is checkpoint to the CPU memory, and it can checkpoint model states for every iteration, and it, it incurs the negative overhead for the on the training throughput. In this way, Gemini can reduce the failure recovery overhead from hours to minutes. In addition, the design of Gemini can be applied to different plans and strategies. And last but not least, AWS AI is hiring, and we have open positions for both full-time employees and interns. If you are interested in large language model systems, you can scan this code or just stop by our booth for more information. I can lose my talk. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, questions. Uh, not sure who was first, but we'll start over there. Okay, thank you. Hello, this is Jiahuan from Shanghai Jiao University. A very interesting talk. Uh, you have mentioned that since checkpointing on CPU memory could be lost, so you store checkpoint on multiple machines. So do you consider using local NVM for checkpointing uh, as a possible solution so that the checkpoint will not be lost even if the machines crash? Thank you. Um, I think that could be a Good try, but because um, we just use the existing machines in AWS, only have a CPU memory, only have this one. But I, I think it's a good um, um, future work. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm Rong Xin Chen from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Nice work. I'm interested in the cost of CPU checkpointing. You said that uh, erasure coding is costly, right? Mm -hmm. I wonder how many percent of time is spent on erasure coding if you, uh, oh, sorry, is spent on CPU if you use erasure coding instead of replica. Okay. Okay, I got it. So the question I think is uh, what's the overhead, computation overhead if you yes. use erasure coding? Right. Um, so based on our evaluation, we both, we use both CPU uh, for the computation and GPU for the computation. So for the CPU computation, when the data size, when the checkpoint size is 100 gigabyte, so it can take around one hour to finish the encoding. So for the GPU, because at the GPU part, there's some uh, optimizing library to do that, but it still takes uh, like tens of minutes to finish the encoding. But it's much worse than our design, because we can do it every iteration. Okay, uh, then I wonder how frequent such checkpoint happens. So with, with, with the issue coding or with our design? Uh, your, your, your design then. Okay, in our design, uh, we, like we said, we can do it for every iteration. Every iteration, okay. 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 Um, over there. Uh, and then hello, uh, Chen Li from USTC. Uh, wonderful talk. I'm just wondering the, whether the checkpointing technique you pro propose is actually orthogonal to parallel lizards. Because in the evaluation part, you showed that you're working on, uh, you, you're porting uh, deep speed zero, right? I suppose that they, uh, they use the data parallel. Uh, can you comment on that? Thank you. Um, yeah, so I think the question is uh, <laughs> whether our design can be applicable to different types of parallelism strategies. So I think that the, the, the answer is yes. 
because our design, we don't make any assumption on the specific kernel strategy. So, because let's consider the checkpoint model states. No matter what types of parallelism strategy you're using, the model states on um, each machine is uh, independent. We only need to copy the data, the model states, from the CPU, GPU memory to the CPU memory, and that's it. So regardless of, of, of what kind of parallelism strategy you are using. I, I think it could be different, because mm -hmm. uh, parallel, different parallelism, for example, like model or tensor parallel, right? Mm -hmm. It's required the partition of the model. So there might be some coordination for the recovery. But the data parallelism may be easier, right? Because every, guy, every, every single machine got a copy, isn't it? No. But we can take the offline if you okay, well, we can take it okay. offline. Okay, thank you. Okay. Steve? Hi, uh, Steve Han, Google. Uh, fun talk. Um, I'm curious, uh, in the paper you very briefly mentioned, or I just skimmed it anyway, that you can recover from software um, crashes. And I guess I'm curious what sort of software crash recovery you, you have where you know that the checkpoint that you've created is correct versus not. So what, what sort of software failures did you encounter in practice that you can recover from? Uh, so I think uh, the question is what types of software failures we encountered. Okay, so we have different types of <laughs> recovery, like um, OM, out of memory issue, is very common. But you may know like, the, what's the fault? Root cause of OM it has different reasons. Another thing is um, MPI, MPI library, or some other library issues. But in AWS, we are still like detecting different types of software failures and many types. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, if it's a very quick question, we could come with one more, I think. Yes. Yes. Hi, I'm Marcel from Imperial College London. Thank you for the great talk. Um, I was wondering, since you moved like the checkpointing into domain memory, why you're still, while the training is happening, moving the data out into remote storage? Can you elaborate what the reasoning is, and not just like write it to remote storage when the training is finished? Thanks. Um, I guess the question is, why is, do we still need to store the checkpoints in a remote storage system? Yes. Okay, so maybe, maybe for two reasons. One reason is, um, the checkpoint stored in the CPU memory can handle most of the failure cases. But still, there's some, some rare case, like, a, for example, the in, infrastructure outage. All the machines get down. In this case, how can we still do the recovery? So all the, all, all the data stored in the CPU memory will get lost. So we still need somewhere for the recover, failure recovery. This is the one reason. And, uh, sorry. Uh, now, and the other reason is that like, uh, checkpoints can be used for other purposes. So our checkpoint solution is only for failure recovery. But if you need any, any purposes, you need to do it for storage system. Thanks. Okay. Um, thank you once again. Thank you.